Opinion about gamer girls who are better at this game than you? Why would I ever assume that a girl would be worse at a difficult game about climbing than me? Is your ass born in like 1971? You have antiquated ideas of what women are capable of? Very strange question, quite honestly. You think I'd be offended that a girl is better at games than me, bro? I married one. You are a sexist. Normally, that would make us great candidates for being friends, but I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> we love sushi. Listen, that part is true, though. <laughs> Not for every individual, but broadly. I don't, I, one day a, a perfect news study is going to come out. There's going to, like, Maxim Magazine is going to run, like, the ultimate survey. And it's going to be like, we've confirmed, we surveyed 100,000 men and 100,000 women. Women's favorite food, by and large, was sushi. Men's favorite food, no surprise there, pizza. And you guys are going to be like, blah, 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 he was right the whole time. The scientists at Maxim Magazine have, have put in the empirical legwork. If that isn't the case, I don't concern myself with conditional hypotheticals, Origin. The important thing is, when it is the case, you're all gonna owe me a serious apology. Yeah, yeah, man. Don't even get to the end of the girder. Why would you? Why would you worry about it, man? Does Kate know about the sushi pizza theory? Yes, of course. She watches Librarian. Kate has sushi and pizza enabled in her chat. Exactly. Again. That was like I was right there. I was right there. Okay, obviously that's not gonna. That's fine. That's not gonna make it. But that was. There's encouragement there. Stay on the left 20% of the beam. You can still preserve a lot of momentum. So you're suggesting moving to the, and by left 20%, I'm assuming you mean the 20% left of the rope, not the 20% at the far left of the girder. That's correct, okay. Because when I hear the left 20%, what I would consume is, what I would assume, I should say, is the leftist. But I guess I'm fucking stupid. No, I'm sorry, I'm on edge, okay? First, get the shit going. You gotta get max speed. 
Hey, Anel, did you take physics? Faint bunny, I dead ass. Two things. First off, I thought I banned you yesterday. 100% simple as. Secondly, I did want to ask if you were okay. Because after you got timed out twice, I saw you spam like a hundred times. Hey, NL, can you help me? I think using Instagram too much has made me parasocial about strangers' lives. And I was like, damn, this person's really going through it. Maybe I shouldn't have banned them. Then the first message you dropped today. Hey, NL, have you ever taken a physics class? I should have banned your ass yesterday. Quite, that's what I get for showing some degree of empathy for someone going through a mental crisis. <laughs> you aired them out? It's their comments! I didn't air them out! You timed them out for 600 seconds twice. And where did that get us? You piloting a fucking uh, rocket as it approaches the speed of light and gets close to a body weighing 1.8 trillion tons. Your onboard computer. Oh, didn't you take a physics class? Just fucking bust out the formula sheet, bitch. What eigenvector should you take to approach it so that the, all the skin doesn't come off your fucking skull? You learn this in physics. Computer, can't you just uh, auto-program my telemetry? Hmm, then you wouldn't learn anything. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Does she not know that I have a foul mouth? <clears throat> I actually... Uh, so here's what just happened. My wife has... Uh, she's bundled up lots of our daughter's old clothes to give to a, a friend of ours who has a kid who is the age that our daughter used to be. She said, in 15 minutes, please no swear words. <laughs> They're my friend too. I didn't know that they get offended by profanity like that. I have, I don't, not in the habit of just like letting it fly. Origin Angel banned Faint Bunny. <laughs> what did they say? What did they say? Krusty Jugglers, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. <sighs> Some people, they just... It's just easier to be... To, to get attention for being bad than it is to get fulfillment for just being normal. Their last message was a nice message. I trust Origin. I went through all of their messages before coming to uh, the decision. You know how hard it is to get Origin to ban someone for being mean to me? They would be a hypocrite. So they must have said some stuff in there that was serious. So I can just chill here is what you're saying to me. And then... Go now. Yeah. <sighs> hey, you wretch. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you. I go when the left is peaking. Okay, info. How many times have you beaten this game? Just the way that you phrased it was good. I go... Not like I went. I go. Like you're playing it like multiple times a, a week at least. I trust you implicitly as a result of the verbs you chose to use.
or they're still trying. They are playing at their residence. One time you almost had it, so you should keep doing what you were doing the time you almost had it. Okay, thank you, CEO of advice. <laughs> Not wrong? Yeah, but what the fuck was I doing the time that I almost had it? Because every single time is basically like random neurons firing in my head. I need the, I need the second step. I am getting better at swinging the girder. There is that. One more. Yes! That's heartbreaking, but we go again. Okay. That we've got enough now. You get the girders swinging like a son of a gun. You go when it's peaking and you go slow. And then we got it. Thank you for telling me you go when it's peaking. Go when it's peaking and go slow. Slower than you think. <laughs> I just got to lock in, lock in, lock in. Everything okay, son? Yeah, dad. I just got to lock in. Come on, we got you surrounded. I'm locking in. I'm locking in. I just need to lock in. Why are so many smarmy motherfuckers in chat? I know how to do this because I took a physics class. I'm inclined to think that honestly, your physics teachers fucking sucked if you know, if you can apply the knowledge from your physics class to a difficult game about climbing. I was learning about hawking radiation and shit. Astrophysics. I was not learning some Ohio physics. What if you wrapped a steel girder in a fucking rope? That'll help a lot in daily life. It's not like this is helping you in daily life. You're in my Twitch chat. <laughs> you had your chance. It didn't take. And now we're stuck with each other, okay? We got to figure out how to make it work. Go again, go again, go again, one more time, one more time. Slow. That was also, that was good enough. That was, I'm just happy that it was a good attempt. Why are you so hot today? People, they, they get mad when they get criticized. When I criticize your criticism, people are like, he's pissed off. Your criticism is not like, here's what you should do. It's like, have you never taken a physics class? That shit is insubordinate. Churlish? I don't know. I don't know what it means. Again. Yeah. Yeah. 
Again. Again. I think that's enough. I'm going to do one more. Then we go slow. That was too slow and I was holding space the whole time so my dude was flopping around like a fool. Okay, ready? We hang on it. We do tricks on it. I'm 100% out of sync. Call Justin for this. Justin is good at this game, but Justin's got a superior gamer brain as well. He's just a better gamer. He must have had better physics class. That's tragic. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> you know what, though? At least we're not at the girder. It feels good not to be at the girder. <laughs> you focus on the positives. Oh, man. Positive mental attitude. Now we can relax a little bit until we get back. I fucking hate that girder, bro. <laughs> Maybe the weirdos will go away now. No, I mean, like, listen, I'm not actually tilted. It's just like... It is crazy that... I, it actually, like, you don't understand that it makes me feel bad as a human being. If you see, like, one trolling message, you're like, okay, that person's, they feel like trolling today, so be it. If you see, like, two years of, like, unobserved trolling, you're like, oh my god. There's people like this in the world. That's the scary thought. It's more like, I realize that, like, obviously planet Earth is, like, letting some fools slip through the cracks. Oh, not that one, please. Oh my fucking god. We're, we're sorting this shit out in one second today. What, what do you want to tell me about the, the Hyundai Ionic? Actually, a pretty important message. <clears throat> not important. My friend who knows that... Uh, I voted for Justin Trudeau in 2015 and then said I would never do it again. After he said that he wasn't going to actually follow through with electoral reform, which was like one of the main reasons I voted for him in the first place. He linked me an article from the CBC today that said Justin Trudeau has floated the idea of electoral reform as part of their next campaign in the federal election. Fool me once. Uh... <laughs> Shame on me. Fool me twice, we woke. it must be really bad if you're going back to the 2015 hits. I knew it was bad, I didn't know it was that bad. Come on. You guys want some cookies? <laughs> oh, man.
favorite Chris Kattan film? Mm, me personally, I'd have to say uh, Night at the Roxbury. Corky Romano is obviously up there. Um, Monkey Bone, a little bit too art house for my taste personally. Santa's Sleigh is pretty good as well. I've lost my muscle memory for a difficult game about climbing. It's actually crazy how he gets past the filters without learning what they're filtering. The humblest tortoise. What was your childhood like? Is this how you thought it would be? When you imagine what it would be like to be an adult? Free to make your own choices, nobody telling you what to do? You think you'd be waxing philosophical about a difficult game about climbing? As if it was fucking... <laughs> okay, okay, caught emoji, alright, alright, you're saved, you're spared. You're assuming that you're adults in chat? Yes! <clears throat> All the kids are watching Kai Sanat. I know you're adults because I see the fucking millennial ass way, keep calm and carry on way that you type. You're like, we are adults, but please don't assume that we're adults. Only 14 year olds should be watching you. I just so happen to be a 31 year old computer engineer from Peoria. <laughs> Whoa, now we're talking. There we go. There we go. Hold. Hold, 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 hold. <laughs> I started watching your eyes extremes when I was 15, if that counts. Sure, yeah. I mean, I was 25, 10 years ago, too. I know what it's like. Hold. Hold! Okay. Hold again. <laughs> Hold. Hold. That was my holding pattern. I was watching your Dark Souls Invasion stuff when I was 56. Now we're talking, man. I want more messages like that. People are always like, isn't it crazy? I was 13 when I started watching you. I'm like, nah, brother. Who the fuck else in 2012 was going into YouTube and typing the Binding of Isaac into the search bar? That's what it was there for. That's the target audience, bro. 
That makes perfect sense. It would be crazier if somebody was like, I was 35 when I started watching your Isaac episodes. I would be like, you were 35? Didn't you have, like, a, a family? <laughs> Didn't you have stuff to do? You were just going into YouTube and, like, raw dog in the search bar typing in XCOM Enemy Unknown? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. When you're a kid, you got more free time. Didn't you have to, like, do the dishes or pay your taxes or something? Yes! Yes! Good cycle, good cycle. Grasp it firmly. Can I not grab this bush? Is this bush? This bush is the, one of the great lies in gaming history, okay? He's done it. Okay, you can climb the windows. Why climb the windows when you can wax these drawers? Huge. You gotta have confidence in this game. How come librarian can post links? Because unlike the average person in chat, they're not gonna say, okay, I know links aren't welcomed here, but you just have to see this, and then it's like the least funny thing you've ever seen in your entire life. They've used their power for good. They do post a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah, but they post a bunch of, like, great stuff as well. Sometimes I wake up at 5.45 a.m. and I open Twitter and, like, the first eight tweets are all from the librarian while I was sleeping talking about some kind of, like, VTuber stuff that I don't understand. It's not for me to understand and that's okay. Sometimes they post clips of myself where I'm like, oh, actually, this was, like, uh... It was pretty funny. I was kind of cooking on this one. Okay, now this is a hard part. It was a great time to not think, to just trust yourself to do. You know what this has done? It's actually made me excited to get back to the girder. And you're gonna say like that's psychosis and maybe it is, but I think it's a good thing. I had become so disillusioned with the girder. Now, next time I get back, I'm gonna be like, yes, I'm back to the girder. You can't put a price tag on an attitude adjustment like that. <laughs> Me when I bruise my kidney on route to the pool. I have those speedos, but in rainbow. It is crazy to think, um, you know, I'm, I'm a noted, uh, you can post your lion ball in chat. 
I'm a noted uh, old head when it comes to basketball. It's so funny whenever a basketball Twitter account tweets a video from like the 2000s where everyone's wearing those fucking shorts that come all the way down to your ankles. And then they post something like, you need to understand that in the year 2001, if your shorts didn't go eight inches past your kneecaps, you were automatically gay, which at the time was like a really bad thing to be if you were in the NBA especially. The idea now, like I, I remember being in high school and being like, I can't imagine wearing shorts that come up higher than my knees. Now, I can't imagine wearing shorts that even touch the kneecap. They look so bad. <laughs> Isn't that the reason you're wearing shorts is to like uh, show off your legs a little bit and, and get some air? If anything, I'm like the Speedo makes sense, man. As long as the, the thing with the Speedo is I feel like it has to make, um, it has to make a seal between the, f the fabric and your leg. If your balls are too big, you need, and, and like it's not making a firm connection with the substrate, then you probably have to go up a size. That was the reason I didn't like wearing briefs. I'm not bragging, I had a medical condition known as a Hydra seal. So whenever I would wear briefs, like a little bit of ball would always be hanging out the side because, I mean, it was the, the ball was just too fucking big, honestly. That's when I finally converted the boxer briefs and I haven't looked back. Oh. I have a Hydra Seal too. Let's go. There's dozens of us. I think it affects like 4% of men or something like that. Wait, did you have giant nuts? Just the one nut? I had a testicular ultrasound because of it. Me too. Me too. Ooh, what a delicate jump. I was actually talking about it with my parents because I was in high school when I got it diagnosed and then removed from my body. It's crazy thinking back. I went to an after hours clinic. I was like 15, 16 years old. And I was like, hey, one of my balls is like the size of a lemon. And they were like, that's not normal. We're going to get you in to see the doctor immediately. I saw the doctor and the dude said, oh, he was like, in my head, he's eating an apple while he diagnoses me. This is the class of doctor we used to have. He was eating an apple with one hand and he walked in and said, take your trousers, take, take your fucking trousers off. I took them off. He said, that's a Hydra seal. I said, what's that? He said, it's just a fucking fluid filled sack in your, in your scrotum. Here, so he, he said, here's how they diagnosed it, at least before the ultrasound. The dude took out a pocket flashlight and held it behind my sack and then shone the light through. So you could see that there was like a ball and then it was surrounded by like uh, an extra fluid filled sack around it. He's like, yeah, that's a Hydra seal. And I was like, man, it sounds like antiquated medicine, but in 2024, I bet it, they would be like, oh yeah, it's probably a Hydra seal, but fucking our flashlight guy only works Tuesdays and Fridays and he's booked up uh, until June 2025. Sorry. Um, but like according to recent stats, 91% of people that come in with this problem uh, see a specialist within 18 months. Unfortunately, the other 9% do pass away. But mm, inevitable, I guess. Is that bad in Canada? I might be exaggerating a little bit. It depends what you're after. Like you, if you are uh, after maid pills, I'm pretty sure that they'll door dash it to your house like within 24 hours, at least according to the news stories that I've seen. 
But if you want like medicine to keep you alive, sometimes, I mean, I get it. There's a lot of demand for that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, you might have to wait a little longer. Yeah, next time I need um, ciprofloxacin, I'm definitely just flying the Cabo San Lucas. Actually, though, I'm not even fucking with you. The crazy thing is, is that it's actually, I'm sure it's cheaper. <laughs> yes, I didn't have to pay out of pocket for anything but the pills at the end of the day. So the all-in cost... To the pocketbook ended up, I don't know, it was like probably like less than $20. I did have to take six days off from work to go to the urgent care two times, the ER two times, and then also the internist. So there's like, you know, basically one work week yeeted right there, plus two to three weeks of waiting while I felt like pure garbage the whole time. I could get from YVR to Cabo San Lucas in, I'm going to say under five hours. Swing by the pharmacy. I don't know how much a, a, a course of ciprofloxacin would cost me at the first Cabo San Lucas pharmacy I found, probably inside of the airport. Take one of the pills in the airport bathroom, get on the next flight back to Vancouver. I think I'd, I, I might miss well, a day. Then Senor Frogs. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll catch me at Senor Frogs washing down the ciprofloxacin with 18 margaritas. When you worked in an office environment, were you a lunchbox Andy? Depends what you're asking. Are you asking about, um, did I carry a lunchbox? No, I carried, this is back when plastic bags were legal. I would carry a plastic bag with a Ziploc bag with a sandwich in it. Maybe like an apple and a banana and a granola bar or something like that. And then I, I rationed myself. I ate lunch out in the neighborhood my office was in once a week. I place a lot of spiritual benefit on eating lunch in a workday in an environment surrounded by other people. You've, it, it makes you feel like you're at the lunch counter of fucking Macy's circa 1951, like building a new ICBM to keep America safe or something like that. It reminds you that you're part of society, you know, you're not just one dude. I used to work at a place close to a grocery store. So on Mondays, on my lunch break, I would just go buy like a loaf of bread and lunch meat, cheese, maybe like some lettuce, and then just make the sandwiches at work. It was like I kind of, I, I didn't bring my lunch from home or get takeout. By the way, that's a great tip for those of you ad addicted to DoorDash. Did you know that you can buy all the... <laughs> I can't get into this discourse, okay? I'm just concerned that we as a society are conditioning ourselves to be weaker than we actually are with, in respect to this one specific issue. I saw somebody that was like, I know, I ordered too much DoorDash. I know that I can buy the food from a grocery store, but the problem for me is like when I want one sandwich, I have to go buy an entire loaf of bread. I have to buy like a pack of lunch meat. I have to buy a pack of sliced cheese. And I just don't want to eat that many sandwiches. So I end up like throwing out all the ingredients. I wish a grocery store sold like kits where you could just make one sandwich with the ingredients. And I'm like, they've literally, you understand 
not to be rude here, but you didn't do fucking anything and you're still complaining. You didn't raise the animal, kill the animal, process the meat, turn it into a weird fucking wet pink log, slice it up and put it in the store, send it out, put it on a, a refrigerated truck to get it to the store. You didn't plant the wheat, water it, harvest it, mill it into flour, bake it into a loaf of bread. You didn't do fucking any, you did, there was, and they, all this shit shows up in the grocery store miraculously due to economic incentives. And you're like, yeah, but I just want to buy two slices of bread. Just eat five sandwiches. It's okay. Living alone and buying food fucking sucks ass. No, it, I did it for so long. It's totally fine. You just buy whatever you want. <laughs> it's actually the easiest way to grocery shop. Wait till you got to complicate it with three people who all have specific different food vetoes or something like that. Alone is so expensive. Two is the sweet spot. POV, um, you and your wife split food costs equally, but you eat more food than she does. That's the only way that shit makes sense. Otherwise, the, the math ain't mathing. Okay, you, if you live alone, you probably can't shop at Costco. I'll give you that. Cooking and cleaning for one person is just a lot some days. You ever see the, <laughs> the tweet about how hard... Halloween is um, when you have ADHD because like you can't choose a costume and the re top reply is like you fuckers can't do anything can you? <laughs> what do you mean cooking and cleaning? Don't say cooking and cleaning for one person, okay? You're cooking and cleaning for yourself. For It's not one person. It's not like you go to the cleaning factory and your output gets sent to a stranger or like your op or something like that. You made the mess, fucking chicken little. And say so it's, what do you mean? It's, it's not easier to clean for 10 people than it is to clean for one person. What are you talking about? Doing chores for other people is more rewarding. There's always a reason, isn't there? There's always a reason it's easier for other people and not for you. We should get some kind of system going because it feels so much more fulfilling to do work for other people than it does to do work for yourself. What if we had a system going where like I did some shit for you that you didn't want to do and you did some shit for me that I didn't want to do. We live in that system right now. That's what the system is. You spend eight hours doing some shit that someone else doesn't want to do. You probably don't want to do it either. It gives you money that you can give to someone in exchange for doing some shit for you that you don't want to do. You've invented the system. You see the shit where they were talking about like it's too hard to make a frozen meal so I have to order DoorDash instead? People were jumping through hoops. Yeah, but making a frozen meal is sometimes too much mental load if only there was a rotating assortment of volunteers that you could sign up for that would make the frozen meal for you? I don't know what you... How deep could... Now it's because at some point, isn't it too hard to sign up for the volunteer service? Like it never ends, man. Yeah. At some point, you just got to nut up and pop the shit in the microwave, Okay. You can also, the rule is, you can also order from DoorDash. You just have to hate yourself. That's it. 
you are uh, absolved from negativity for ordering from DoorDash as long as you hate yourself while you do it. What you can't do is be like, I have no choice but order from, like ordering from DoorDash is actually the noble thing to do in this, in this situation that I'm in right now. As long as you do it begrudgingly and go, oh, I can't believe I'm fucking doing this again, then there, uh, the light in your soul is still on. I have no quarrel with you. It's only when it's like somebody criticized getting a coffee that costs $3.50 DoorDash for $11.72. I got to explain to them why my unique situation means that that's the only thing I could do here. That's where I'm like, what happens? Getting the prepped meat from H Mart has saved my life? Dude, this based. There's some good stuff. They got some yang yam. Galbi, L.A. Galbi, Bulgogi. Also, I was under the impression that everybody knows how to grocery shop. But actually, like, I wouldn't want it, because I hate whenever I'm like, I went to a restaurant last night, and people are like, oh, a restaurant, have you ever heard of a, the grocery store? I make my own food. You know the stuff they sell in restaurants is also available in another store? I'm like, yeah, I know. I just didn't want to do it. I don't know how the fuck to make takoyaki, bitch. <laughs> I gotta go out there. Every time I've got a craving for takoyaki, I gotta see it coming like two weeks earlier and then go to fucking playasia.com and get a takoyaki maker and oh do you know you go to fucking H Mart you get the takoyaki batter yourself like well, can I just go like never you deserve treats now and then okay and if you after your 108th time eating takoyaki you basically break even um but there's people in the comments that are like I, I mean, I just can't get over the dude who's like, I drive a Ford F-350, so it's actually cheaper for me to get DoorDash than to burn the gas to drive to the grocery store for every meal. And I'm like, brother. It's my favorite guy. Guy who goes to the grocery store for every meal. No wonder people are like, I don't like to cook. You wake up, you're fucking hungry, but then you got to wait for the grocery store to open, drive to it, pick out all the shit, drive back home. By the time you get home an hour and a half later, you're like not even that hungry anymore. Your body's already gone into starvation mode. Who the hell wakes up before 7 a.m.? I don't know, probably like 60% of American adults, if I had to guess including myself. I'm not a man. Well, let's not get into the Am I American <laughs> discussion with D.L. Guiga here. This motherfucker is still swinging, huh? We're so back. I'm so happy to be back, too. Get it swinging first. Again, I want to reiterate. You should be able to use DoorDash now and then. You should just feel like a tinge of regret to do it. Whenever people are... I, I, I hate the fucking... Puritan Andes who are like, you don't deserve anything. You don't deserve to ever go out to eat. You don't deserve to ever eat fucking full fat cream or something like that. Don't you know you're gonna have a, you're having one cupcake? Mm, don't you know that the cupcake is full of fucking glyco phycolate? You deserve treats, man. Even back in the day on the fucking Savannah, I'm sure they were like, holy shit, check it out. It's a fucking like cashew or something like that. People are really like, mm, I'm not sure I've earned the cashew. Hmm. Pretty sure they were chow. That is the shit that probably like made life worth living. Right. 
But you should not be trying to run interference for using DoorDash every day. I mean, you could be like, I use it every day and I'm embarrassed. But you can definitely not be like, I use it every day and it's actually better than the grocery store. Because that is... I don't even know what you want me to say. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be anything positive. <laughs> Oh no, I left for 15 minutes and he's back at the girder. It, what little did you know? No man ever swings from the same girder twice. Because it isn't the same girder. And it isn't the same man. I've come back with a new perspective. I'm very happy to be here. Close, close, we go again, we go again. <clears throat> See the viral post of the lady who got 15 fries for 10 bucks at the Canucks game? I have. I'm sorry to say, I think the old Canucks are back. This is besides the, the point of the white spot. First half of the season, I'd see a tweet that's like, we're locked in after two. Canucks are up 4-0 on Washington Capitals. Then I'd see the tweet at the end of the third period, final, 5-1 Canucks. I was like, oh shit, we're actually like doing something this year. Now... It seems like every single game is the same tweet after the second period. Having a good night at home. 3-0 Canucks. And then it's like final. 4-3 in overtime for the visitors. And I'm like, what the? Something's not. This is the start, man. This is the start. Even last night. Two zero, up 2-0 two at the end of the second. 1-3-2 at the end of the game. Come on, brother. Come on. Gonna need a little bit more confidence than that, please. One more. At least it's the pool. At least it's the pool. <laughs> I, got, I got... I wanted it too bad. They could smell it. They could smell the desperation. What about the fries, though? Well, we talked about it yesterday. I know, like, concessions are just too expensive at the Canucks game. If you, uh, if you think... What, what basically happened is she got a, a really shit pour of fries. The white spot, or the triple O's inside of Rogers Arena where the Canucks play, actually tends to be one of the better values. Certainly not cheap, but uh, she, she was a victim of variance, essentially. If you really wanted to rile people up, tell them how much an actual beer costs. 22 ounce beer, $23. Should not be possible. No scram, yes. <laughs> so like 18 American? When, when they do the conversion, but it's still outrageously expensive, cereal? <laughs> I paid $22 for a Bud Light inside of Legoland once. Absolutely insane. $22 USD for a beer inside of Legoland? Holy, those parents are getting bent over. They know their audience, man. Holy cow. Wow, 
are you buying beer at Legoland? First time? That's why I get my shit dashed to me. <laughs> Imagine being in your seat at the hockey game and then seeing the dude come down with the fucking Uber Eats backpack, the level one Tarkov helmet and the Uber Eats backpack and unzip your shit. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be great. It was like actually cheaper to buy my Dasher a ticket to the Canucks game and then order 24 beers from DoorDash than it was to get beer at the stadium. Holy fuck. Yet I'm the asshole when I try to smuggle alcohol in in the Camelback. Here's my uh, axiom for this. I don't think... Well, first off, if you're in... Like, if you're... Uh, a you have a family and you're doing this, you're probably cooked. It's just bad optics. You can't be a dude with a, like a spouse and a kid and then also get like dragged out of the stadium for trying the camel back like 12 beers in. <laughs> you, you're, they're going to send you to rehab. But if you're like, you know, 26 and you're doing that, I think it's totally fine. As long as, and you need to be honest with yourself, as long as it's not going to be a fucking problem. If you can handle your shit and you're not going to get way, way, way too fucking drunk and disrupt things, then it's not a fucking problem, okay? If you examine yourself and you're like, I'm not 100% sure that I can rely on myself not to get too fucked up and ruin the night for other people that are around me, then you don't get my permission. But I will also say, fuck the stadium. One of the times that I said fuck the stadium for sure was when I took my kid to a hockey game. She was two, and they searched her backpack, which is whatever. Like, it's not their choice. This is what they get paid to do. But then they saw her water bottle and made me pour out her water bottle. The fucking Peppa Pig, like, aluminum water bottle with stickers all over it. Because they were like, we don't know, like, what's in the water bottle. But then you can fill it up with, uh, like, there's a water fountain right next to the garbage can. And I'm like, honestly, if you're going to punish me, you're going to be like, this degenerate might be smuggling vodka in in his kid's water bottle. Then I fucking hope everybody smuggles that shit in. Because I'm getting punished and I didn't do it. As soon as I'm getting punished... Because I could have done the crime that I did not do. I hope that everybody doing the actual crime fucking sneaks by you. Also, no disrespect, if I was trying to smuggle vodka into a hockey game, I would not do it in a water bottle, like the number one place where 17-year-olds try to smuggle vodka. My ass would be smart about it. I'd be sophisticated. I would duct tape like a Ziploc bag full of vodka to the inside of my leg. And then I would go into the bathroom. I would get a, a well, first I would get a water cup from concession. And then I would go into the bathroom. I would untape the Ziploc bag and I would pour it into the, into the water cup. You would not, like you can't stop me from doing it. That I am stopping me from doing it. Don't flatter yourself. Like I'm going to put, Kirkland Signature Vodka inside my kid's fucking Peppa Pig water bottle like it's a high school dance or something like that. You think they, do you think those chaperones were never 16 once? Better a thousand innocent men face the gallows than one guilty man walk free. Yerp! <laughs> this is so true. I went to a Mariners game, they made me dump my sealed water bottle on the plants. Like, if it was vodka, wouldn't it kill the plants? Doesn't matter, brother, it's all about control. It's all about control. I got breathalyzed for every high school dance. It's fucking crazy, bro. I've never been breathalyzed in my life, and I've been drunk as fuck. Yeah. 
No one ever even bought one on like Wish.com and brought it out for a night out. Then we could like, you know, compete with each other. I've never had the experience. I got breathalyzed at every dance as well, even during COVID. Where are you going to school? I'm sure people were drunk at our the high school dances. I only went to one of them. And prom. People were definitely hammered at prom. 